my admin either already posted or it's just about to post the solutions for the assignment two and uh, the midterm and solutions for the midterm, both regular and extended, so that you can check uh, your solutions and decide whether uh, it is worth haggling with me uh, about your mark. Okay, so let's continue our practice uh, about, uh, uh, dy dynamic programming at the moment. Guys, okay, so here is a problem that you had on the list uh, that I posted last week. So you have n As you can see, you have n lily pads, right? So, and uh, on each lily pad, you have written uh, how many flies there are sitting on this lily pad. Uh, so here you might have two flies, here you have five flies, maybe here you have seven flies and so forth. Not necessarily increasing, maybe here only one. And you have a frog uh, sitting here, as you can see, right? So the frog can jump uh, either three lily pads to the right or five lily pads. So here the frog skips two lily pads, and here the frog skips four uh, lily pads, okay? And uh, so these are one, two, somewhere here is the eight, and here is and lily pad, and your task is to tell the frog uh, how uh, it will have to jump to collect the largest number of flies coming from uh, before the first, um, the first lily pad all the way to the end lily pad. Or maybe the frog is actually starting with the first lily pad, it doesn't matter. So let's make things simpler. Assume that uh, the frog starts from the first lily pad. How would you solve this problem? This is a simple a dynamic programming problem without complications. It's kind of textbook example, yes? Is the fly from other lily pads jump from the fly away when the frog jumps from it? Whether the, okay, let's ponder whether, so the question is, as the frog is jumping to a particular lily pads, how many of the flies are going to uh, run away. Well, assume that these are these lily pads uh, read mainstream uh, press, and uh, they don't have enough mental capacity to decide that they have to uh, that, they, that the frog is approaching them. So, how would you solve it? What will be sub problems? What are the uh, as we mentioned last time? The ingredients for dynamic programming are the defining what the sub-problems are, and the sub-problems do not have to be just the same problem of smaller size. Sometimes you have to generalize and introduce new parameters to allow recursion. In this case, this won't be necessary, so um, and after that, we have to decide in what order we will solve the subproblems. What would you guess? What is the eight subproblem here? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, this is true that dynamic programming problems often allow to, um, to be solved, so to speak, doing recursion in two different directions. One way of solving the problem would be to recurse as follows for the height, assuming that the frog is on the height pad, what is the optimum that uh, the frog can get till he finishes to the end, right? So this would operate on suffixes. Right? And in a sense, the recursion goes from end, from right to left, right? Another option is uh, to actually solve the same problem um, going from left to right. So if your mother tongue is Hebrew or Arabic, you will choose right to left. And uh, for Indo-European languages, you might prefer left to right. Both work. And there are examples when actually you have to use both. And the example is, uh, um, on your homework, you have uh, this problem with solving this rec uh, recursion in n, uh, what was it, uh, in, with n log n space. Uh, it's actually possible to do it in O of n space only. And the solution, uh, which is quite tricky, but you will get it uh, when you after the problems set is due, um, you will uh, see that actually you have to combine the two recursions to, to solve in such a, in a, in a, with a very tricky uh, construction. Okay, so let us do it left to right, right? Um, what is then the sub-problem? On the exam, I expect you always to formulate, say, problem pi is max number of uh, flies the frog can get um, ending at uh, uh, lily pad i. So uh, this is the only kind of trick that uh, is needed for this. So we will do it on sub-sequences, the recursion. But to make the recursion simple, we force, we demand that the frog has to end on this uh, lily pad, right? Once you solve the whole recursion, what you get, uh, well, in this case, actually, it will be what you get here, but sometimes you have to rescan the array to see uh, the largest number of flies that uh, uh, the, um, the frog can get. So uh, why we, do we do that? Because if you assume that you have to end up on the eighth one, you have only two options. One is option that you came from uh, uh, one, uh, the lily pad that is three away, and the other one, oh well, uh, that you came from one five away, you will look what is the optimal solution here, what is the optimal, what's the optimal solution here, what's the optimal solution here. Take max, so you will take max of opt i minus 3, uh, opt i minus 5, plus the number of flies of on the 
clearly pad i. Right, so I don't, we don't want to, it, it's, it, it's un, totally unnecessary for dynamic programming, I urge you to avoid losing points because you miss something, forget about pseudocodes, uh, and don't write long stories. Simply say, my sub problems are PI is such and such, and the recursion is such and such, and then final solution, here it will be opt, because uh, uh, the condition says that the, the frog has to uh, end on lily pad n, so it will be opt n. So that's all what you have to write. What's clearly stating what sub-problems are. And remember, as we will see in subsequent examples, sometimes P of I is not just uh, the same problem truncated to the array of size I, but it might, it might be necessary to introduce more parameters. And for that reason, rather than sub-problems, because it's not quite sub-problem of the original problem, these are called states but I don't like this term. Uh, you can just call them generalized sub-problems. So what I expect you to see on the final is clear definition in English what sub-problems are. And uh, so recursion opt i is equal max opt i minus three, opt i minus five, plus the number of flies on that particular lily pad. And you see, because we insist that the frog has to land in, on lily pad i, rather than what's the largest number that it can get from the lily pad smaller than i, then recursion would be much messier because you wouldn't know what was the ending point of the uh, recursion that you want to extend? If you force that uh, uh, the sub-problem that uh, the, the subsequence that frog jumps has to end in position i, recursion is trivial because there are, as you can see, there are only two cells from two lily pads from which. Uh, uh, so that the optimal solution is obtained by extending the optimal solution for the one with the larger value. Okay, so this is kind of simplest dynamic programming when you don't have to uh, generalize the problem. Uh, but sometimes this doesn't work and you have to be uh, to apply something more Clever. Okay, let us first see end. So sub problems. Here it's clear how sub problems are ordered. They are ordered by the size of index i, right? And in this order you solve them, right? Sometimes you have to figure out what's the proper index. Oh, sorry, what's the proper ordering? So here is an example. So you have a a uh, rooted tree, right? So each node except for the leaves uh, has uh, uh, children, one or several, right? And uh, each edge has its weight, I believe. Yes. So you can think of the weight of the edge as the price, the cost of removing that edge. The problem is asking you to remove edges of minimal possible total weight so that you cannot reach, starting from the root, any of the leaves. Right, so you are given a tree. 
each edge has a certain price on it uh, that you pay when you remove that edge, you want to find a collection of edges of minimal total weight such that when you remove them, there is no path from the root to any of the leaves. Okay, what will be here the sub-problems? What do you think? What are natural sub-problems? So, we look at all possible sub-trees. So, here is the problem P, uh, T, right? Notice that it makes no sense to speak about P1, P2, PI. Here, the problems are indexed by the subtree or the root of that uh, uh, tree, right? And uh, um, what is the subproblem? Uh, minimal uh, total cost of uh, all edges uh, which have to, to be removed to uh, disconnect the root of T from all leaves. So that's the problem. In what orders, in what order will you solve, will you do the recursion? Uh, when should a problem, when does a problem has to precede another problem? It's a partial ordering. So when? Children go first, right? So uh, PT uh, uh, precedes PT prime, has to precede it if and only if um, T is a subtree of uh, uh, T prime. Okay, it's, I strongly suggest do not say start from children and because if you mess it up, then that's it. If you write the problem and the recursion and the ordering, then you simply say we proceed by recursion along this ordering and that's it. You don't have to explain anything about uh, um, about the process of the recursion itself. You simply say, we proceed from leaves towards the root uh, along respecting this ordering of the sub-problems and you give a recursive formula. Everything clean and no opportunity to mess it up by uh, something silly. So I strongly suggest that's by far the best, the best way. How would you uh, do the recursion? Uh, if I have opt for all uh, TIs uh, such that um, uh, root of TI is a child of uh, uh, the root of uh, T. So if you have all of these, then how do I get, how do I get opt of T? Yeah. 
it's a sum of uh, what? Of all the children, and for every child we can see the attitude by two of the of the eye or the edge. Exactly. So you have two options. If you know the cost of disconnecting, uh, of making the root uh, disconnected from the children, then you simply look. Is the total cost to discon disconnect the root from all the leaves smaller than the value of this edge or larger? If it's larger, you disconnect uh, this edge. If it's smaller, you simply disconnect um, all the leaves from this root, subroot, right? So it's opt sum of, uh, uh, say, uh, 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 vertex v uh, such that v is uh, a child uh, of uh, uh, root of t. So for all children, right, you either take optimal solution here or disconnect this. So it will be sum of the mean uh, opt, let's call this three uh, TV, right, one that is rooted in V and uh, at the cost of the edge uh, between root, let's call it R and V, right? So uh, let's call this R, uh, this is V. So you sum up over all children, um, the expression that is minimum of the cost of this edge and the cost of disconnecting uh, the leaves from, from V. And this you already have in your recursion table, right? So you simply sum up all the minima, cost for all sub three, and the cost of this single edge. So in this case, the recursion, the ordering of sub problems is by uh, being a sub three rooted at the child. Okay. So, um, any questions about this? Yes. Sorry? The tree. Yeah, yeah, the, the tree can have only one root. It's a rooted tree, right? Only one root. Well, the, obviously the cost is zero because, uh, well, there are no leaves. Uh, well, the root is a leaf. Okay, so we rule out. Uh, we say additional constraint that the cardinality of the tree is at least two, right? I mean, if I give you a point, would you call it a tree? Have you seen a tree that consists uh, just of a little piece of wood on the ground? <laughs> That's not a tree in my country. <laughs> okay, and by the way, uh, uh, always, uh, you know, even though I should kind of spell it out, but amazingly enough, students are always capable of finding kind of vagueness in the formulation. So, for example, for your homework, you have this network flow that has source and uh, sync and two additional uh, special nodes, U and V. And I got, uh, you know, gazillions of questions, are there any nodes uh, in the network besides U and V and S and T? Uh, so assumption, yeah, I guess, 
I kind of count on common sense, but uh, I should be more precise. I, hopefully, I was uh, precise uh, for your final problems. If you are unclear, you can always complain and they contact me to ask you, I mean to answer. Okay, so here is another problem that we have to figure out in what order and which sub-problems we solve. So it's this. Yes. The first problem being this one, yes. Sorry? If opt? It doesn't matter for i minus 2 because the, uh, the frog cannot end up here from i minus 2. All the legitimate jumps are 3 and 5. Okay, so, what if, what if you're at n and you just don't know the So, it might happen that the answer is uh, the uh, optimal solution is 0 because the frog cannot end up on the end lily if the divisibility is such that, uh, uh, that you cannot make. So if n, is this possible that n is not equal to 3k plus 5m uh, for any k and m, or is any number? Probably it's possible, so... Um, Seven, right? That's right. So in this case, the solution is zero, right? Because there is no way to end up at the seventh lily jumping in this way. Yeah. Yeah, so it's always possible that the optimum solution is zero. Yes? Why the recursion will be... Okay, so that's the question of do I have to prove that my solution is optimal, right? Uh, hopefully, so if, it's, if you are not explicitly asked, then uh, the assumption is that the recursion will be self-evident that produces optimal solution. But if you are asked to prove, then you have to prove. Yes? Uh, yeah, so in this case, what will happen? In this case, you have no other option but to remove the edge. But wouldn't the value for the zero, and that would be considered the minimum, and you wouldn't have... Sorry, say it again. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a very good observation, so I did mess it up. So here in taking this mean is only if, uh, um, so the cost for the children should be set to be infinity. That's very good, uh, excellent observation, right? Because here if you have the uh, recursion will break down because here the mean between the cost of removing vertices, uh, sorry, edges to isolate the root because there is nothing would be zero, but then uh, the mean will be zero rather than this. So we should put uh, that the cost uh, opt of leaf is equal to infinity. Very good. Yes. I mean, obviously, there are, as, as we just mentioned, there are some lily paths that are not reachable. Yes. Like, for instance, the second or the fourth one mm -hmm. is not reachable. So doing the recursion, you'd, you'd obviously have to make sure that, uh, like, if opt i minus 3 was un unreachable, yes. pad, it would have to have. That's exactly right. So during the recursion, 
for the lily pad, you all, okay, very good. So uh, if opt of uh, m equals to zero, um, sorry, if opt i minus five is equal to zero, then um, and uh, opt um, opt uh, uh, i minus three is equal to zero. Uh, this implies that opt of i is also equal to zero. So you add only if uh, uh, equals to this. Sorry? I mean, I itself might have a lot of flies on it. So, oh. so you cannot just add it. If uh, both of them are zero, then rather than adding this uh, would be zero. Uh, that's assuming that, I mean, you might actually have some lily pads that just have no flies on them or something. So maybe you have a special value. OK, no, no. So we are speaking about, uh, uh, not about the number of flies, but opt at that point. Uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Slow, slow, slow. So. Imagine on the, on the pod three, five, and uh, there would be zero flies. One, three, and all like one, four, and six, there would be zero flies. So, so, wait, 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 wait. So, one has zero flies? Yes. And then. And then two? Uh, two? Uh, sorry, one? Yes. Zero, no, zero flies. Uh, sorry, this is two, so this is also zero. Mm hmm. So this is zero and this is two, this is three. Oh, ah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So all of them imagine would have just zero. Mm -hmm. Therefore, somewhere on the on the way it would actually be legal to calculate the marks of the previous one, even though they both would be zero. So this condition is not what we want. I'm just saying you need it. You probably want to use a special value if it's yeah, like minus Ah, very good, very good. So if it's uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, you see, so uh, if I took the exam, I would flank it. So let's, let's be more pedantic. I was rushing to do as many problems as possible, but it's better to look at every single detail. Okay, so let us see how should we write the recursion. Yes, so let us uh, introduce uh, the special value. Very good, so one has to always worry about these limiting uh, cases. So let us set, so if uh, uh, Lily uh, is uh, an uh, um, set um, a set opt to infinity opt uh, if Lily I is a reachable set opt I to infinity. Now, does this make uh, the else uh, opt uh, opt of i equals? Now, do can I uh, add? Uh, so does it remain correct to the recursion now? Uh, because if, uh, uh, now the problem is we have to tweak the recursion, right? Because we are taking max. So if one of the sides is. Not necessarily, we can just append i uh, indices minus one, minus two, minus three, minus five, and make <coughs> the amount of flies negative there. And then we would always use this equation. 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, so the question is, you see, if we set unreachable to infinity, uh, oh, we should set it equal to minus infinity. Would yeah. this work? Okay, so let's set opt equals to minus infinity. Now we want to see if this recursion holds. So you have several possibilities. So this is i, i minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So this is i minus 3 minus 4, minus 5. So what we want is, if neither of the two are reachable, this should also be unreachable. And we are taking max. So if, uh, the, if one of them is unreachable, this max will be the value on the other. And we add i. Only if both of them are unreachable. So it looks it works, the recursion, if I'm not mistaken. So opt i equals max opt i minus um, 3 opt i minus 5. And we can now freely add plus uh, plus, plus, plus um, uh, the number of flies on the lily eye. Right, so now this recursion is correct because this will be set to infinity, minus infinity, only if both of them are minus infinity, otherwise it will pick, yep, now the recursion is correct. So the only addition actually necessary was to set if a lily is unreachable, opt should be not zero as I foolishly thought, but you have to make it uh, minus infinity because a jump, jumps can be legitimate and only no flies on these lilies along the jump whatsoever, so opt will remain zero even though uh, the point is reachable. Very good. Okay, so let us now look at the following problem. So you have to cut wood stick in several pieces at the marks on the stick. So you have a long stick, right? And there are some marks on the stick. I'd say there are n marks. Um, and we can call 0 the beginning, and the very end we can call uh, n plus 1. OK, you have to chop this stick in all of these pieces to separate them all, but the cost of cutting a stick, so cost of uh, uh, cutting a stick is equal to the length to make just one cut equals to the length um, of uh, stick. So this is a single cut. To make single cut on a stick, it costs you exactly um, the length of that stick. You have to decide in which order you should make the cuts to minimize the total cost. OK? So let me give you here, there is an example. So assume that you have a stick of 10 meters. So this is 10. And the marks are at 2, 4, and 7. 2, 4, 
and uh, seven. Okay, this should be then a little bit longer. Okay, and this is 10 meters long. So now we have the following option. First, uh, we can cut, let's see, in this example, at two, at four, and then seven. If you cut at two, the first cut will cost you $10, right? Then if you cut at four, your stick is this long, so it will cost you $8. Plus to cut at, uh, so this is uh, uh, point 0.4. To cut at seven, this will cost you an additional $6 because this is uh, six long, right? But on the other hand, so the ordering is here, uh, two, four, six. Instead, if you cut it in the following way, first cut at four, then you cut at, uh, let's see, then at two and then at seven. Uh, two, four, and uh, seven. What would be the cost? When you cut at four, the price will be 10. Always for first. Then, um, if you cut at uh, uh, two, the price will be how much? Four. The length of the stick plus. Then you cut at seven, this will be uh, six, right? So the first one gives you 24, right? And the second one gives you only 20. So it's better to cut in this order than in that order. The question is, if I give you an arbitrary stick, right? How would you decide where to cut? Okay, so I knew someone will say that. Cut as close to the middle as possible. Now, the annoying thing is, uh, I didn't try terribly hard, but I couldn't find a counterexample when this fails, when greedy strategy fails, but I'm pretty sure it does fail. So here, are to earn extra point, uh, I'll give uh, five extra points uh, if you find a counterexample in which always cutting the stick near the, as close to the middle as possible actually fails. Yes? Sorry, you have an option too? So say the, the stick is 10 mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, very, very good. So you are saying, so the suggestion is uh, to show that cutting uh, as close to the middle will fail. Assume that, uh, uh, well, the thing is after you cut, so whether this will produce uh, a counterexample to uh, I'm not 100% sure because when you cut here, then this long piece disappears. And only, so I'm not sure. Okay, give it a try and email me your solution and you got extra five points. So, um, ba -ba -ba -bum. okay, so how would you solve this problem? What do you think? What would be optimal? Solution. Sorry? Well, in the, so the, uh, the question is, if you cannot find counterexample, it means the solution is correct. Well, not quite. Uh, not finding a counterexample is not sufficient. You have to prove that it is optimal, right? But this one is clearly optimal because when you do the middle cut, the cost is the same. Sure. Write it down and you got five points, okay?
Okay. Um, what do you think? What will be some problems? Can we? Let's try to do it in the same way as we did the lily pads. So let's assume the, that the height problem is the stick between zero and mark i. Right? And the question is how should you cut this uh, optimally? So assume that we solved up to i, and uh, uh, then we want to solve for i plus 1. Is it easy to recurse here? No, because optimal solution might be something that crosses this boundary, so it's not, um, doesn't seem to be uh, possible. So what is a trivial kind of way when you have something like that? Uh, what were some problems? So this sound kind of sounds exponential to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, you see the point here, you always look what gets preserved, what feature gets, actually what feature gets reduced after you perform an operation. If I cut a stick at certain point, what is definitely true about both parts? Both of the parts that you get. They are both smaller. So the recursion should go. So each stage of recursion, right? All the sub problems, so the sub problems will be listed according to the number of marks on the, on, on the stick, which would correspond if we index the, the marks between one, here is somewhere i, and here is the end, n plus one, here is n, what is, how do you get the number of marks? How, if I give you a stick uh, somewhere in the middle, how do you tell how many marks there are? It's just uh, J minus I, right? Minus one, is it? Because if j is i plus 1, there is nothing in between. So this, no, no, it is, ah, yeah, yeah, minus 1. So this will be, so uh, let's call this uh, um, quantity L of ij. Yeah? So here will be all the problems for which L of ij is 0. L of i j is equal to 1, L of i j equals to k, and so forth. And the very last one is, of course, uh, uh, just uh, n, that is before of any cut. How do we recurse now? So opt, we will find opt, so find opt i j, which is the minimal cost for cutting the stick with i and j as ends. Right, so actually you make two-dimensional, your function will be two-dimensional because for every piece between two, two marks, it will give you optimal solution. 
Why are we doing it that way? Well, because opt of any ij will be recursively computed as a mean of what? So optimal solution for ij. You have a stick between the marks i and j. You want to cut it. To find the optimal solution, you simply have to do what? You try every place. Now, it's important to notice. Very often, people think that this results in a brute force solution, but it is not. Only the iteration part, the recursion step, is brute force. But this doesn't <coughs> make uh, the whole algorithm brute force for simple reason that um, th you don't repeat the same, sol solving the same subproblems over and over again. Right? So here, opt ij will be mean of opt ik uh, plus opt of uh, kj. Uh, plus uh, the price is j minus i to make this first cut, right? So when k goes uh, between uh, i plus 1 and uh, uh, j minus 1, Right, so you look at all the marks that are in between, right, and you try for each of them where you should uh, uh, cut, right? Uh, and uh, you compute recursively the cost to cut there. How? You simply add up the cost to chop totally this piece plus cost to optimally chop this piece plus the cost of a single cut. Right, so this gives you the optimal solution for all i, j. Yeah? Of course, uh, if uh, uh, j, um, j uh, minus 1 is equal to i, then opt of ij is equal to zero, right? Because then this doesn't apply. OK, yes? One point, I just noticed that most of our calculation is treating like i and j as being the indices of the uh, a positions. But the length there, it's actually using them as like Ah, yes, 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 yes. OK, so we should have said here. OK, so to be super precise, well, OK, let's uh, measure the length uh, in uh, units. So the length of a stick between 0 and i is i. So i, are in, i and j's are integers, so we are assuming that the marks are integers to make things simple. So the length, otherwise you will have to have hassle here of uh, actually using L of uh, ij, the distance between the points i and j, but we take it the distance to be unit. I believe this is also how it was formulated here. But that's true. In dynamic programming of this type, uh, uh, most of the time we assumed uh, lens to be unit, but of course it generalizes because then otherwise L of ij will not be this, uh, but uh, will be uh, the distance between uh, point i and point j on the stick. OK. Yes? It has to be the marks in between i and j. 
Otherwise, the, it's a single piece without any marks. It doesn't require any further cutting. So this is what this says, right? I and I plus one, equivalently J and J minus one is zero. Right? Yes? That there are different, okay, okay, so um, K, we take K to be its index, its length, uh, to correspond to the length of the, the position on the stick. So K defines, and of course K can be, can appear, and that's very important, K can appear in, on multiple sticks, any stick that uh, has K in between will, uh, uh, this K will appear. So, in terms, uh, so what if there are two marks on the, with, between the interval I and J's? So you can capture either the first one or the second mm -hmm. one, and if it divides the interval evenly, and then you have multiple values of K. So you can have, uh, you, evens are always broken, um, uh, because these marks will be just achieved several times. So the question is, what if uh, uh, cutting, uh, if the marks are symmetric and cutting on one is equal to the cutting of the other, it will just cause that optimal solution will be achieved twice, if there is a symmetry, right? <coughs> okay, so let us now see. Um, I guess we can make a five minute break and then we will continue with more problems. Yes. Yes. 